In this video, we're going to look at another efficient sorting algorithm. In this case, it'll be quicksort. Before we get into the implementation, we want to talk about the algorithm at a high level. So the first thing we want to do is we want to partition the elements in the array. So we're going to select a partition element, and then we're going to move all the elements smaller than the partition to the left of the partition element in the array. Then we're going to move all the elements greater than the partition to the right of the partition element. Once we've done that, we're going to have two partitions and we're going to recursively sort those two partitions. So our implementation, we're going to have a generic array of objects that extend comparable. And if we just are passed in the array, we'll actually call this method that has a min and a max value. The initial min would be zero. The initial max would be length minus one. And we also have a partition element that has a min and a max. And the reason we do these two is so that we can call these on the array, but only work with a certain part of the array. Now, the way quick sort works is we are passed an array, and then we choose a partition element. So we're just going to pick the middle element as our partition. Then we rearrange the array so that everything smaller than the partition gets moved to the left of the partition, and everything greater than the partition element moves to the right of the partition. And we recursively do that. So here in our left partition, we have, we've chosen two as our partition. And so again, we, we're going to recursively quick sort that. So notice we move everything smaller than two to the left and everything larger to the right. And so at this point, you can see that each piece of the array is sorted. And so now we have our sorted array. Now, before we actually see the implementation, I want to talk about how we choose our pivot. So the ultimate goal when we're choosing a pivot is we want a pivot element that is as close to the median value of the elements in the array as possible, because that means we split the array in two with that pivot. Half the elements go to the left and the other half go to the right. Now, the first or last element is a natural choice. However, if the array is already sorted, that's typically a bad example. So here we have four different arrangements of these elements in an array, and you can see we've chosen the first element. But you'll notice that in these first three cases, if we select the first element, we don't partition the array at all. In this case, everything is greater than the partition. Here and here, everything is smaller than the partition. Now, in this case, six does a fairly decent job. We have four smaller and two larger, and that's good enough, even though it's not an ideal split. Now, what if we choose the last element for the partition? Well, we run into the same problem we had before, if the array is sorted or reverse sorted, everything is on one side of the partition. Now here we have three, and so one and two are smaller, and nine, seven, six, and five are larger. So that's a pretty decent split. And in this case, we have five, which gives us a very nice split, three smaller and three larger. Now the middle element is typically a reasonable choice. So here we've selected the middle elements. And you'll notice here, if the array is sorted, choosing the middle element is guaranteed to be ideal, because that would mean half are smaller and half are larger. But of course, it's not interesting to sort a sorted array. But even here and here, notice that we get a 2-4 split, which again, is good enough to give us an efficient algorithm. Now, we could also pick a random element, which is essentially as good as a middle element, assuming the array isn't sorted. But an even better approach is to take the median of the first, middle, and last elements. So we look at the array, we grab the first, middle and last elements, and then we take the median of those three values. So here you can see the first, middle, and last element. And then in each case, we take the median of those three. So we have five, five, six, and then in this case, it's five. So here, since these are sorted, that middle element is the median. Here we have nine, six, and three. Six is between nine and three. Here we have six, three, and five. Five is between six and three. And again, when we partition there, notice we get a perfect partition in three of the cases, the first two and the last one. And even in this third case, we still get a, a good enough partition because we have a partition of four elements smaller than the partition and two that are larger. For our implementation, we're actually just going to choose the middle element. But hopefully from here, you can see how you can improve that by choosing the median of the first, middle, and last elements. So here's the array we're going to sort. So we have a min and a max, the first element and the last element. And then we're going to call the partition element. And notice the partition element will rearrange the array and it'll return the index of the partition. So the first thing we do is we set the left and right 
references. And again, these are going to be indices into the array. They're not going to be the actual values. So left would be zero and right would be six here. Then we're going to find the middle, which would be this point here. And then the partition element variable is going to hold what that value is. So then we're going to swap the element at the middle index with the element at the first in index. And that's just so that the partition element can be out of our way. We'll actually swap it back later. So we swap it. And now this is the array that we're going to actually do our work on. So the first thing we do is we check to see, is the left reference smaller than the right ref value? And, and we hope that it, it is, because once that's no longer true, that means that we've gone all the way through this array. And what we're going to do is as we work on the array, we're going to move left to the right, right to the left. Eventually they cross, and that triggers this condition. So while left is less than right, and that's not going to happen for a while, we check to see, is the value at the left index less than or equal to the partition element? In this case, it is, so we're going to increment x. 2 is also less than the partition element, so we're going to increment left again. And then now we have 7, which is not less than or equal, so we continue. Now 3 is not greater than the partition element, so we're not going to enter this loop at all. And now we swap the elements at left and right. And now our loop is complete. We're going to start over again. Left is still less than right. 3 is less than or equal to the partition element, so we're going to increment left. But 9 is greater than the partition element, so we stop this loop. 7 is greater than the partition element, so we're going to decrement. And 5 is not greater than, so we're going to stop and we're going to do a swap. So now we've swapped 5 and 9. And now we're back to our outer loop. Left is still less than right. So we're going to increment left as long as what it's pointing to is less than the partition element. 5 is less than 6, so we increment. 1 is less than 6, so we increment. However, notice here, left is no longer less than right. So now we're kicked out of this loop with that check. And then right is still pointing to 9. So 9 is greater than the partition element, so we are going to decrement. And now data right is now 1. That's not greater than the partition element, so we kick out of that loop. And now we're going to swap left and right. And now we have the swap statement, but notice we only do that if left is less than right. In this case, left is not less than right, so we don't do a swap there. So this loop is complete. So now we're back to our outer loop. However, left is no longer less than right, so our loop is done, so we continue on with the code. So now we're going to swap the min element, which is where we stored our partition data, and the element at right. And you may think, how do we know we can do this? Well, we know that everything here is less than or equal to the partition element. And we also know that that's the partition element because that's what we swapped it into. So this is going to move the, the partition element one index to the left of our left pointer. So you'll see now 6 is here. And now you'll notice everything to the right of 6 is greater than 6, everything to the left of 6 is smaller than 6. So now we return the index where 6, we return the index where we stored our partition, which is 4. And now we're at our outer call again. Now what this is going to do is we're going to recursively, we found the index of the partition, which is going to be 4. Then we're going to sort the left partition, which is going to be from min to the partition minus 1. And we're also going to sort the right partition, which is going to be from index plus 1 to the max. Now, one thing to notice here is the partition element is in its final place. So as I continue to call this more and more recursively, each time I make that recursive call, I'm setting one value in its final place. So as we make recursive call after recursive call, you can imagine that more and more values are in their final place. And that means we have fewer elements that we have to worry about sorting at each step. And so I'm not going to walk through the rest of this, but I think it would be a good idea for you to take some time and, and try to complete the walkthrough of uh, this particular sort. Uh, the key to remember, though, is that when I sort here, for this call, min is going to be here, but the max is going to be here. Likewise, when I make this call, the min is here and the max is here.